Hey Clashers, there are new goblin maps in the game and in this video I will show you the easiest solutions to every single one of those single player maps. In this video as well I won't use any super troops which you have to activate to make your life way easier and you don't have to spend any dark elixir to completing those goblin maps. As well I will always share what my opinion is about the pet, best pet use cases or for example if you need actually solid level heroes or your heroes aren't really relevant in this specific attack. And if you like those guide videos like these or any of my strategy guide videos and would like to support me and my channel Make sure to use a creator code when buying anything in game. Offers, gold pants, or whatever. Use code ITSU if you would like to support me. Thank you so much, it's really appreciated. And now let's get into it and start with the first single player map. Starting things off with a go to bat. And this is going to be, well, king and queen from the bottom side. We can use the Yeti Blimp, which we're going to rage up right away because we want to take down the splash damage. As soon as that's done, we're starting with the dragons from the top side. Drop two dragons each on every single mortar on the top and then just the many dragons in between with the warden to follow. Then on the left and on the right side you can start with your bats in just a second. Use the warden ability as soon as you approach him versus all of those different Tesla and then place the bats in between the scatter shots. Really important that you have to place them in between and on top of them. Otherwise it might be the case that uh, well the, sc the scatter shots are going to take the bats down. With this placement though, it's not going to work. And you can see already, this base is done. You don't even need the Royal Champion. To be honest, you would have not really needed the heroes, the King and the Queen for example either. I think this challenge you could have completed without any heroes, if I'm completely honest. If I look at how much dragons we have still left and how much power. But this is already the first challenge done. Let's jump to the next challenge. The next thing as well is I will always play those challenges based on the levels which are recommended by the game. Which means the first five challenges with Town Hall 13, then Town Hall 14, the next five challenges, and then Town Hall 15, the last five challenges. Always oh, really important to know. On this one, if you think you can activate a super troop, use super bowlers for this one. Instead of regular bowlers, it should be just way, way stronger and remove some of those P.E.K.K.A. For this approach though, because we do not use any super troops, we're going to have a small queen charge around the top side, Yeti blimp into the core to lure up the clan castle and take down the inferno tower. And as soon as that's done, as soon as the Yetis are delivered to the core, you're just going to place your warden next to the queen. Raise your queen up again to make sure that she's not losing her ability. It's always nice to keep that queen ability to the later stages. And as soon as the, um, well, hound is at your queen, just drop the poison on the top right side with your king and the bay dragon and then place a nice jump. Yes, super ball breakers could be used over here as well, but again, we do not want to use any super troops. That's why you have to use this jump then to get straight from the outside into the inner core to make sure that, well, the entire base is open. Golem, Pekka, everything in, the, all of those bowlers. And with that, we have now a huge push surrounding this base. The rage, the last rage, we're going to deploy that as soon as you're reaching the town hall. Use that rage there, combine it with the warden ability, and then the last heal spell you are going to use as you are going quicker into the back end, into the double scatter shots or triple scatter shots. Overall, deploy them if possible on your bowlers, and then add the right hand from the three o'clock side, from the right side. With that, this base again should be done. Again, for this base, I would recommend medium upgraded heroes. I think it would be quite supportive if you have them nicely leveled uh, because it's relying quite a bit on your heroes. If you're using super bowlers though, the heroes do not have to be upgraded that well, which gives you more freedom overall to go and approach this base. But with this being said, this should be our next three star, our second three star of this series. Overall 15 challenges, which means 13 more to go. Let's take a look at the next challenge. And the next challenge is going to be again for town on level 13. And this one, suspicious gap. Well, this gap, you do not want to deploy anything in there, especially ground troops. So instead, we're going in with air. Deploy the bay dragon, two loons at the chop side, funnel a little bit, and as soon as the bay dragon has funneled enough, draw a nice line of loons and then dra um, electric dragons from this left side. You can see already everything is in slammer in there as well the slammer is filled with an electric dragon and more loons and just at this point keep raging your electric dragons whenever you see electric dragons attacking some high hp buildings just rage it king and queen from the top side and at this point just use your freezes wisely which means 
Double uh, Eagle is a nice place to freeze. Eagle Expo is a nice place to freeze. Singer Phone Tower, Scatter Shop, for example, is a nice place to freeze. Or if you're already really close to the finish line, you can freeze Scatter and Expo together as well. All of those are great free spots and which I definitely recommend to use. And with that being said, we have this entire base smashed. Again, on this base, the heroes are not the game-breaking um, shoe. The more important one are by far the Electro Dragons to actually overpower the space. So this means three bases down and we go for two more with the uh, Town of 15 style. Next one is going to be again Electro Dragons, but this time we're going to mix two Lightnings in this one because we can take down both Sweepers right away. After that being said, deploy the Electro Dragons and the Balloons, Slammer in with as well, early warning ability and then the Bay Dragon to Funnel. Rage things up and as soon as you're getting through the first couple of defenses, you can then deploy your King and your Queen on the far right side. Really important, make sure that the King is running the, way, the, the right way. Um, so take a look at how I deploy things and you should easily make it. Next one, Rage at the top side or the left side more like. And really great free spots on this one is always Town Hall and Eagle or Town Hall and Scatter for example. Those are the perfect freezes for which you can use to actually overpower the space. King, Queen, Royal Champ are going to finish things off. But again, hero level are not as crazy crucial. It's nice to have decently upgraded heroes. But again, the Elected Dragons are dealing most of the time the most damage in this one. And are the more important thing is which you have to take a look at. If you have never played Elected Dragons, give it some more tries. Overall as well, Elected Dragons, without any elixir costs nowadays for your troops, you can really, really easily make this work. With that, another three stuff for us in the books. And this means another single player map down. Let's move on to the next one. In this next single player map, in this next goblin map, we are having, in my opinion, the hardest challenge of them all. Yes, you could use like Zap and Super Witches, which makes this a bit easier. But with the, like with my own restriction of not using any super troops, this is not really possible. So instead, we have to go for a fancy option, okay? This attack means your hero level are not as important. The only important hero level on this one would be the Warden, okay? Having the Warden on a decent hero level would mean a lot because this is going to speed up this attack quite a bit. Because we want to Warden walk pretty much the entire base. Since there is no attacking time in those Goblin challenges, you can get sometimes a bit creative. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Remember though to play those two loons in the beginning of this attack to actually trigger those two black knights. You want to keep all of your five healers and this is incredibly important to make this attack work because with losing healers you will lose power with this warden and might lose the warden ability which would be a complete no-go. Later stages we're going to send heroes in from the far left side but this is still some time to go because our goal is to take down the eagle with this warden. Yes that will take some time. You can chill at this point a little bit Maybe already get ready mental to actually deploy the first and only rage which we're going to drop for this warden walk. Because as soon as this warden is going to finish off the cannon on the left side, he is going to jump in front of the Mojan Fern Tower. This means he is in range of three expos and you have to rage him up. So already pre-select the rage and as soon as the warden is jumping into that compartment, you have to have this rage ready. So he's taking down the cannon. Then he's jumping into the compartment and that's the moment where we want to deploy that rage. There we go. With that, the healers should keep your warden alive, really nice and safe. At this point, the only spell which you need for your warden walk is the invisibility spell. This spell you have to use as soon as the warden is dropping too low and gives the healers some options to actually recover again. This most of the time is happening as half of the hit points of this one expo is down. That's why you should deploy your, your invisibility spell. With that being said, we have already pretty much done the majority of work. At this point again, it's only about waiting and preparing already on a mental way to start with our hybrid in a couple of seconds. As I said, this warden walk is going to make this base really easy. We can nearly swag the royal champion on this one. I, I will show you in just a second. But for now, hero, warden more specific, is on the eagle. And this gives us already the time to actually prepare our smash or our hybrid attack from the left side. We're going to use a miner, then a hog rider, and then the siege machine all back, like back to back to back. 
and then in just a couple of seconds we're going to use then king and queen remember this order give the pekka some time to run in front because you want to have the pekka tanking and not the king if possible send the hybrid in place your first heal spell that is going to cover the bomb tower and gives your hybrid a nice way a nice access into the core because that's where you're going to use the warden ability as your warden is going to follow you can use the warden ability if possible clip that uh, attacking king as well in your warden ability that is going to help keep just raging healing everything and then you have one giant you have two bakeries as well for the back end place those to trigger all of those skeleton traps and then just deploy those bakeries to take all of those skeleton traps down i see deploy the royal champ but you would see in just a second what i mean with like you could have swagged this royal champion as well and you see as well why i'm saying that the heroes are not an as important factor in this attack because the entire important thing is this warden walk in the beginning into then the hybrid hybrid is going to finish this entire base off and you can see we have the queen swag ability royal champion we have placed her we could have swagged her but overall as soon as you're getting this entry done you are going to get this third star as i said let me know if you would agree that this was the hardest challenge of them all but i would love to be wrong maybe as well let me know what your hardest challenge in your opinion is next one and that means we're starting with town hall 14. most of the town hall 14 challenges are just insanely easy with electro titans this being said is i feel like the designs are really really meant for electro dragon eh, for electro titans because take a look at how many skeletons there are electro titans with their aura are going to make quick work of those defending skeleton and traps and yeah that's just the main reason just really watch carefully where I deploy those troops and what exactly am I doing with the rages because you just have to keep raging your left side electro titans and you're going to already smash this base the thing is though with tunnel 14 now we're starting with those challenges I want to give you a quick rundown as well on how I handle this with the pets the pets on tunnel 14 I will never really change them with as soon as we're going to reach the challenge level for tunnel 15 I will still use the town of 14 pets. I will give you recommendations if you have already unlocked the new pets, but I know that not everyone already has unlocked the new pets on town level 15. So instead, I will always tell you the recommendation, uh, like the recomm uh, recommendation of pets which uh, I would go for. Next challenge, okay? This is as well one of the harder ones, but if you follow a couple of steps, you should easily be able to make this work. This one, flame flinger from the top right side to actually take down this entire compartment. Then start with some wall breakers to open up the bottom compartment. Do the same thing on the left side, but you have to tank for the wall breaks with an ice golem. Wall breaks in, and then five of the eight titans. Place them in. Give them some power with the rage and freeze. You can place the rage a little bit a little bit earlier than I did, but then you do the same thing from the bottom side with your heroes though getting added into the mix. Royal champion is the only hero which you're going to delay. Because you're going to play her from the left side into this compartment as well. Be free to keep supporting that royal champion with freezes to make sure that she really is getting through that compartment and is taking down that eagle. At this point the flame thing already has done some work on the far right side and your troops should finally push into the core. With the warden ability you can actually push your heroes even better with more power into the core. At this point it's all about just saving those spells for the back end. Freeze for your royal champ so she's getting some more value. Rage for your troops in the core and make sure your queen can then have another rage in the back. This one, I would for sure recommend decent the upgraded heroes because, uh, well, otherwise you could get some little bit, you could get a bit closer to be honest. At the same time, though, we do not have that many troops left alive, but at the same time, heroes, which means warden and queen are alive queen abilities still not used, and as well, the flame flinger has not even opened yet. With all of that in mind, this should be another easy approach how to smash this challenge. And with that, let's dive into the next challenge for Town of 14. This one again is Electro Titans. I am uh, sorry if you're looking at this one for like different approaches and different strategies. This is not what this is for. This is for showing the easiest and most consistent way on how to beat those challenges. On this one, we're starting things off with a Barbarian each on every single side. One at six, one at nine. As soon as, you have done, as soon as you have done that, actually deploy your um, Electro Titans, one each at the bottom side. Then spam everything into this middle power and just put everything in there. Rage early, jump into the core, which means place your jump right onto the town hall and then just keep raging. As soon as your troops are deciding either to the top or to the bottom side, just heal them up 
and they're going to stay quite healthy. At this point, just make sure that everything is frozen, which can actually damage your troops, which means single Inferno Tower should be always one target, and then you can combine it with the Expo with the Scattershot, for example. Use the Royal Champ on the left side or on the right side, depending on where your Hog Riders go and how the setup looked like so far, how much your troops have taken down, but at this point you can see already, it should not really matter. Those Elective Titans, raged through the core, are not taking any damage pretty much, and they are just taking down this base without any problems. The one poison which we have in this one is for any of the corner compartments, which we are going to attack as third. So for example, the left side we have approached with the bottom side first, and then the top compartment, like the top corner, we have um, approached as third. That's where you're going to deploy the poison. Do not deploy the poison on the back end, that's just wasted in the end. So, this means another 3 star, another challenge. So, we have now the Goblin, the next single player map, and with this flinger trap, uh, like flinger trick, like with this flame flinger trick, you're going to smash this base. Place one Electro Titan, five wall breakers to break her in, and the flame flinger right away. With this trick, you can take down both Eagle in the beginning with just having some patience, okay? Right now we can see Electro Titan has taken down the skeleton traps, and now we just can wait till, well, the rest is going down. At this point, it's just like waiting a little bit. You can place already the wall breaks um, on the air defense, and now it's just waiting time. Wait until your flinger actually has taken down the first eagle, and then you can make sure that it's even taking down the second eagle, and it'll go then in with your Electro Titans. I would wait personally because I just don't like to wait for ages. I would actually go and ask the, um, ask the eagle, the second eagle is about half HP. That's where I would start with like two Electro Titans at the bottom Tesla, as I'm doing right now. Um, and then play the, play the Ice Golem into the Inferno Towers, all of the heroes right in there. All of the heroes except the Royal Champion. Warden? Well, I will figure out in just a second that I have forgotten to place the Warden, but Warden should be in there as well. Poison the defending Electro Titans and then use the Warden ability as you're fighting those defensive Clan Castle troops. As soon as you're doing that, just keep raging your troops. Again, at this point, it's nothing special anymore. Just keep raging, freezing whenever you are about to face damage, and then add the Royal Champion as your Finger is opening. So for me, Finger is open, Flame Finger behind, rage things up, whatever. This means we have some troops coming from the right side, some troops coming from the left side from the ring, and this is uh, not really path to pain, it's more path to joy, because you are going to have a lot of enjoyment getting this Tracer on the single player map. It is super easy approach, nothing crazy, and everything possible with this incredible flame finger opening at the one eagle. And we have even a ton of swag spells, so if you have any spells left over, which means you want to use them somewhere different, feel free to do so. Next challenge, and this is actually the last challenge for Town of 14, which is not that easy. For this one, I would definitely recommend decently upgraded heroes because this is not an easy challenge at all. We could do some fancy queen charges, to be honest, but I feel like a lot of you are not as trained with queen charges. So, yes, you could for sure do a nice queen charge on this base. At the same time, though, I would be kind of scared that uh, it would, would get too complicated. So this video is not only about, like, giving you three-star solutions, but as well, giving you as easy solution as possible. And Electro Titans are just the best thing to do with that. Yeah, I think you can all agree. But for now, we will take down, or at least damage the scatter shot a little bit. And as soon as a couple of shots have landed on that scatter shot, we will actually place our main troops from the bottom side. On this one, it's important. One Ice Golem, four Electro Titans, then all of those heroes, except the Royal Champ again. And then the Ice Golem and the other Electro Titans right into the Tesla form. You have a ton of freezes with this specific army composition, which means just keep freezing the eagle and the single front tower together. As soon as you're getting closer to those specific eagle single front tower islands, warning ability early on, and then just keep raging um, first on the bottom side and then to the left side as that's where your queen most of the time goes. Then at the royal champion on the top right where your king has went, and just support the flame flinger, support your troops over there. And with that being said, at this point, it's only making sure that you hit those freezes. The tower is a nice location, otherwise, as I said, Eagle and Single Inferno Tower all combined are really, really good spots to use your freezes. Tower is going down, another freeze on the back end. 
but now I think you can understand why I'm saying that you should have decently upgraded heroes, otherwise this could get tricky. So, with that being said, Flamefinger is still looking good, Royal Champion looking good, we have still the Royal Champion ability, defenses are going down, we have even, even some extra Titans left, and as I said, with having so many skeleton traps in those challenges, I feel like Elector Tritons are just the way to go. I'm not sure if it was necessary to have that many skeleton traps because you like they have really forced people to use those Elector Titans, but it is what it is. If you want to have some free, uh, free three stars, that's exactly how you do it. And on this one, we're going with a different approach. Math Witches on this Math Monolith, uh, monolith um, well, single player map. As well, as I have told you already, on those Town of 15 challenges, I will tell you my recommended pet combination as well, because I'm using the Town of 14 pets just to showcase it's possible with the old pets as well, but obviously it's way easier if you, the, uh, if you go for the new combinations. I would go with um, the King, with the Phoenix, then Queen Unicorn, then the Warden, I would go for the Frosty, and, Queen, uh, and the Royal Champion with the Diggy. Th those would be a perfect combination. Um, otherwise, we can just see at this point, Warden ability early on, and the main use case of those freezes now is to get the damage off your King. I don't have my Phoenix on this one, right? So I have to protect my King, which means I'm freezing the left monolith part, then using the heal because there's a ton of giant bombs in this compartment for my witches and then adding the royal champion on the left side to actually support my troops a little bit. So if the witches are going more to the right, add your royal champ on the left. If your witches are going more to the left, add the royal champ on the right. It's way easier if you're using Diggy because then you're always getting those stun effects on those monoliths which makes this challenge way, way less complicated. We don't have that on this one, so we have to kind of just rely on this uh, huge witch push. But still, this is no problem whatsoever. We can just overpower this, this base really easily, again, with relying on this flame finger. If you do not have unlocked the max out flame finger just yet, by the way, you can just donate it to yourself with just using raid medals. I think you're getting a lot of loot in those attacks, so it should be no problem whatsoever to actually use those raid medals for the flame finger. Otherwise, you can see on this one, it's going to be another nice place for us and another couple of resources and more stars for you on the Goblin map. This means at this point, it's now four challenges to go. Four more challenges or four more Goblin maps and we have completed all of those 15 new single player maps. Let's take a look at the next one, which we have Electro Dragons. All of those ground expos are really, really key to actually get this play star in. I'm using in the slammer Electro Dragon and more loons. And the main challenge on this attack is actually keep in mind what defensive rage spells are and what your rages are. You always have to keep in mind that you really want to use your Electro Dragons raged up. But at the same time, with having so many rages there, you need to make sure that we're, you are remembering where you have placed your rages and what the defensive rages are. This is the entire trick in completing this challenge. Because if you're keeping up and if you're actually paying attention, you can see what type of overkill this can be on this base. Use the Royal Champion on the top left and it's going to be an easy time. The combination of pets which I would recommend is King Phoenix, Queen Unicorn, the Warden with the Owl and then again Diggy and the Roy Champion. Otherwise, we can even swag another free so you can see already it's not the hardest challenge. As I said already, it's the biggest problem for you is to keep track what are your rages and what are the others rages. If you can make sure that you have that in mind, no problem. The next um, single player map is going to be the Toxic uh, Town Square, which is not as toxic as you might think. The first thing is, which we're going to do is trigger some tests at the top side and then place another flinger at the top. You can see already at this point that I really love this flame flinger because it's just so nice and easy versus those uh, single player maps. Next one is use some lightnings and always earthquakes to take down those multi inferno tower compartments. It means five lightnings and one earthquake going to take down the entire compartment. As soon as you have done that, come from the bottom side. Use the ice golem first, then all of those healers in and then place your wall breaks and freeze the poison tower. With this, because we don't have a we don't have a super wall break, right? So we rely on regular wall breaks, so you have to use the freeze there 
then use the warden ability and as Akun is going to to the left or to the right use an ice golem and more wall breaks to get that queen into this channel at this point now is going to be that on one side you have your queen and on the other side you have some titans this is typically how this split works as soon as you have figured that out wait until something goes to the core and if there's nothing going for the town hall then just place a royal champion there and well the pet combination actually i would go with yak king queen unicorn then we have uh, Frosty on the Warden, and then we have Diggy on the Warden, uh, on the Royal Champ, I'm sorry. So that would be my combination. Otherwise, again, Flamebringer has not even opened yet. It's going to be another crazy overkill. You can do this pretty much with any hero level because this attack is not relying on your heroes. It's relying on the approach overall, which makes this quite easy. Next one is going to be another Lecture Dragon attack. So with this one, it's going to be nothing, nothing crazy, okay? The pets which I would recommend for this one is King Phoenix, Queen Unicorn, Owl and Warden, and then again Diggy and Royal Champion. Then just getting all of those Lecture Dragons in there with the Slammer together. Keep using those Rages, so um, they are just making sure that you always have some Rage up Lecture Dragons in the core. And then use those Freezes on the back end especially a good combination is the eagle and the explos which are surrounding that eagle just keep freezing the explos and the eagle and you're looking great and well at some point you can just add the royal gem on the far right side with your queen together the main power of this attack though is the elected dragons you can see already the queen the heroes are stuck at some point they're not really getting forward that quickly at the same time though the Electric Dragons are not really dying. This is like the thing. <laughs> they just keep staying alive, staying alive, staying alive and overpowering the space. And you can take a look at how many of them we have still left. Crazy attack, crazy overkill and another goblin map down. Which means at this point, we have just one left. And with this one, we're going to take a look and actually complete all of those 15 new challenges of those 15 new goblin maps. This one is uh mama's madhouse which means uh we're going to have some fun versus this base so first thing use a lightning and or use an earthquake and some lightning to take down multi and poison tower with this being said you can take those out if you place the lightnings perfectly tried a couple of times but that shouldn't be the biggest problem as soon as you have done that just deploy all of your troops from the bottom side remember though place the witches from the outside to the inside Siege Barracks on the left and then your Yeti and the other troops on the right side. This is like how you should do it. You can as well, if you want to make things a little bit easier. <laughs> I, I, try to, I try to make this a challenge, okay? If you want to make things a little bit easier, what you can do as well is um, use like one or two Hawk Riders or for example the Giant or something to actually trigger the outside right and left Poison Towers. That can work as well. I, to my side, I was thinking like, hmm, where could people have some issues? And I guess that's multitasking, so that's why I dropped, like, completely removed that part. But I would definitely recommend, like, if you're, if you can handle, like, if you can handle troops quite well, I would definitely recommend for you using some outside troops to somehow trigger the poison towers. That would be a huge support for your push. But still, I want to show that it's still working without it as well. My recommendation, uh, my recommendation when it comes down to pet combinations is going to be the Phoenix on the King, Unicorn on the Queen, Frosty on the Warden, and the Royal Champion combined with the Diggy. With that, again, we should really easily overkill this base. At the same time, then, with just like the Spam and Prey factor and the Town of 14 pets, it can be a little bit closer, but it's still going to be a free star in the end. Just those mass, witch, uh, mass witches. The defense can just not handle all of those. It's just too much. And especially if you block their defending Pekka, which is uh, Mama, just overtake her with a Warden ability. You can really nicely take her out without having any issues whatsoever. With that being said, the Queen is going to finish off the Tesla, the Queen is going to finish off some more defenses, and the Witches are finishing off the top side. I really hope that it was somewhat helpful. I hope that you... Uh, we're able to complete all of those challenges without having to activate any super troops or having to do any specific special things to actually get this uh, this entire goblin map craziness completed. Let me know which which all of like of all of those challenges which was your favorite. 
and what was the hardest challenge of them. Let me know that in the comments. Otherwise, I hope your goblin map is going to look like this. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys back tomorrow for the next Clash video tomorrow. Until then, see ya and bye bye.